So in this video, we're going to be getting location information about a user from their IP address. And we're going to build a small class to handle doing this just so it's easily used across your application. Now, as you can see, I have a sentence that's been output here. This here is the town name that's being returned from the IP address that I'm using. And you can access other information uh, about the user from their IP address as well. So for example, things like uh, the time zone that they're using, this may not be accurate, uh, the region, the country code, even things like their ISP, and obviously their country as well, as well as a bunch of other things like the uh, longitude and latitude of their location. So what we're going to be doing here then is using an API and we're using this API here to access uh, all of this information. You can use any API you want. The way that we structure the class will be very similar. So as long as you have an API that you're using that provides you this information, it'll work in roughly the same way. And there are free ones, there are paid ones. I'll leave it up to you to decide which you use. But in this case, I'm using this one. So if you do want to follow along with the video, head over here and uh, you can start building up this functionality. So first of all, we're interested in a GRIP and we're getting the IP address location back in a JSON format. So a JavaScript object notation format that makes it easy for us to manipulate in PHP to be able to output to the user. So in this case, then this is how we're calling the functionality. We're building this class called geo and I'm instantiating it here. I'm sending a request with this particular IP address. And then what we can do from this geo object is pull in things like city and the properties that you access from this object will relate to those you get back here. So you can go ahead and just use this as you want. For example, if we wanted to pull in the longitude, we could go ahead and do that. So we could just replace this in here. Obviously the sentence won't make sense now, but once we refresh, that will give us that value back. So it's really, really easy to work with. Let's go ahead and build this. So the first thing that we want to do then is start to build up this class, include it into this page and work out which methods that we need to implement. So I'm going to create a file inside of this directory just here. Obviously this can sit anywhere and I'm going to call this geo.php. And we're going to define the class out here and obviously call it geo. So what kind of information do we need to store inside of this class? Now this of course could come from configuration options, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a property at the top, which is going to be the full URL to the API, uh, including the endpoint that we're hitting. So in this case, this is the uh, site we're accessing. We've got this geo IP section, and then we've got the IP address that we want to replace in. So once you've come over to this site or any other API that you're using, we're going to copy this and we're just going to paste it into here. And we're going to replace this here with a placeholder, a string placeholder that we can replace later with the sprintf function. This just keeps it uh, nice and tidy and, and away from your actual logic within your methods. So next then we want a properties array stored up here and we're going to be using the get magic method to actually call uh, items from properties or from this properties array a bit later on if that doesn't make sense it will make sense uh, a little bit later so we want to an allow a request so we're going to create a, a method in here called request and this method is going to take in an IP address so within here we want to grab the URL that we want to make a request to. We want to replace this string placeholder with this IP address, and then we want to send it off and make a request to the server. So let's build up the URL first of all. Uh, we're going to assign this to a variable. And like I said, we're going to be using sprintf, and all this does is it takes a string. So in this case, it's this API. So we're accessing this property here with this API. And then what we want to replace within the placeholders. In this case, we've only got one, so we just pass IP through. So if we just echo this out then, and over on our index page, we require in that class that we've just built, and then we instantiate it. So I'm going to store that in geo. So I say new geo. Then we're going to say geo request, and then we're going to choose the IP address that we want to request. In this case, we'll just grab this one. 
that you might want to try out on your own IP address. So now this is going to just echo something out. We're not going to leave it like that, but it allows us to just see how the URL gets built up. In this case, it looks good. We know that this is the correct uh, format for the API call. So, like I said, rather than echo this out, we want to go ahead and make a request. So I'm going to say data, and that's going to be this send request, and we're going to send the URL through. Now what we want to happen is this method that we're going to implement down here, we want this to return all the data that you can see over here. And this is JSON, it's in JSON format. I'm using a uh, extension in my browser to render this uh, in a nice way. Uh, if you don't, you'll see something like the following. So you'll see something like this. So don't worry too much if you do. And what we're going to be doing later is uh, we're actually going to be decoding this and uh, converting it essentially into an array. Uh, and then we can work with it easily in PHP. So we're going to create a protected method down here, and that's going to be called send request. And we'll use curl to do this, but you can use uh, any anything else if you want to. So remember, we pass in the URL to this send request method. And in this case, we are uh, getting the URL here from the arguments. We want to go ahead and initialize curl so we can send a request through. And we're going to set some options here. So we use curl set op to do that. We pass in the resource that we're working with, and that's in this case, it's the curl initialization we just did here. Uh, the first one is going to be a curl option, and this is going to be return transfer. It's just make sure we get back the data that we need in order to process it. And we're going to set another option here, and that's essentially just going to be the URL that we want to make a request to. So we're going to say curl opt URL and pass the URL in. So nothing's actually been executed. There's been no request to the to this, this URL at this point. Uh, but what we want to do is return curl execute on that curl resource. Let's get rid of that dollar sign. So all this is doing then is it's going off to this URL. It's pulling back the data that's been returned and we're returning it from this method and it will now be contained within this data variable just here. And if you want to go ahead down here and handle errors, so uh, I think this API will return a 400. Yeah, so it will return a 400 HTTP error if the input string is not a valid IP address. So you might want to just catch that at some point if, uh, if you want to handle them errors, which is a good idea. So now then, all we want to do is inside of here just to test is do a var dump on data. And this will be the data returned from the API. So there we go. So we've got a string of 324 characters and we've got our JSON string just here. And we can decode this using JSON decode. What that will do is it will give us back an array. So we're going to store that in this properties. Remember, we set that just up here. So this properties is going to be JSON decode. We're going to decode that data. And the second argument's true, which means we want this back as an array. So we want this to be decoded not to an object, but to an array. It can be an object entirely up to you. So let's now instead do a var dump on this properties and see what we get. Instead of a string, we should now see an array with 16 items. And you can see all of the information here. Uh, as normal. So we're going to do something a little bit different here. We're not going to return anything from this request function uh, or method because what we want to do is we want to be able to say echo geo and then choose one of the keys that's returned. So for example, say we want to return the city, we want to say echo geo city. But how do we do this? Well, there's a couple of ways you could go about doing this. You could, for example, say protected city. Uh, you could duplicate this down a bunch of times for each property, but we're going to be a little bit more clever here. We're going to implement a get magic method. And a get magic method is not like a traditional method, as all magic methods are not. Get will allow you to access or return something for uh, properties that don't exist. So every time we access a property on this object, it's going to call this method here. So what we do is we pass the key in and let's take a look at how this works. Let's just echo key out. So you'll now see that what's actually going to happen is we'll get back city. 
So it's actually just repeating any property that we try and access. And we can use this to our advantage because we know that we've stored properties up here. We can actually now check if this is set in this properties array and return that. Because remember, that's all come back from the API. So a little if statement here just to say, is it set? So we say this properties key. So we're accessing the key that we passed through to here, checking if that's set within the properties. If it is, we can return this properties key because we know it's set. Now, otherwise, we want to just return null. You can, again, return anything you want here. So now that that's done, what's going to happen is when we access city, that's going to come through to here, check if it's within the properties that have been returned from the API that we stored here and then it's going to return you that value. So now you'll see that the city here is Derry. When I go ahead and refresh, we get Derry back. So whatever method that you're using to grab your user's IP addresses, all you now need to do is pass it into this request method and then return any of the properties that you want from the API call. And again, it doesn't really matter what API you're using as long as you specify the URL here and it's returning it in somewhat like this format, you're good to go and you can return location information about your user via their IP address.